Welcome to the podcast with me, your host, Dr. Deborah Durst, and I have my special guest, Dr. Ibrahim with Restored at Biltmore Restorative in Asheville, North Carolina. He is a urologist and he had a fellowship in prostate cancer. So we've done a previous podcast on prostate cancer. So if you have not seen that, you'll want to check that one out. And today, I'm going to welcome Dr. Ibrahim to introduce himself, and then we're going to talk about testosterone and prostate cancer and some myths surrounding that. So welcome, George. you want to say a few words? Well, thank you so much, Dr. Durst. It's always a pleasure being on your show. I enjoy every minute of it. it we need to do more of these in person. Absolutely. But I look forward to what we have coming up. Absolutely. We always have a good time in person. And we've done some trainings together, vampire trainings. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the clinical staff that's in training has a blast. We're sometimes completely the opposite in personality on a topic, and it makes it very fun. I think people enjoy the fact that we are coming at it from different angles sometimes, but for the same outcome. And, and because, let's be honest, there's more than one approach in medicine and 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 my way is not always the best way, and yours maybe probably is, but maybe not. <laughs> or we and both just day, have strong personalities yeah. and are going to definitely express it, right? If nothing else. Yeah, but you got way you got way better teeth than I all know. I have, that's so. true. That's one of the other advantages I have is the teeth. <laughs> yeah, it got it got it going. <laughs> You're awesome. Like, all right, what's our topic? It. So we're going to do testosterone and prostate cancer. So. You know this better than anyone. So if you want to go ahead and open it up. Uh, first of all, you know, I, I, I am, you know, fellowship trained prostate cancer um, Duke surgeon. And I was one of those surgeons or, 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 or urologists 30 years ago that would not give a man um, testosterone because I was worried about literally, I, I mean, these words are in the book that I will reference um, shortly throwing gasoline on a prostate cancer fire potentially. My views have changed 180% because the knowledge has changed 180%. And that's key. So many providers, myself included, did not know the current education until you know the last 10 years. Testosterone used to be thought as the, the impetus of prostate cancer. It has been found completely to be incorrect. In fact, men with low testosterone levels have actually higher incidences of prostate cancer and worse prostate cancers. In other words, men with higher testosterone levels have less prostate cancer and less aggressive prostate cancer. Testosterone is not the villain. But if you pick up the phone book and you find a random urologist, just like me, 20 years ago than me, I would go, hell no, I'm not going to give you testosterone. And you're going to hear that from many urologists and many primary care providers. And it's wrong. Morgan Abraham, I mean, uh, Abraham Morgan Taylor, excuse me, Abraham Morgan Taylor from Harvard wrote a study years ago where he realized based on a series of questions that were actually on our boards that counteracted each other that showed that men that were not exposed to prostate cancer, I mean, to testosterone, had the exact same incidences of prostate cancer as their twin brother would that was exposed to um, testosterone. And then if you took testosterone away from men, they still had the same outcome as men that had testosterone. So at the end of the day, going through puberty is the impotence for prostate cancer. Testosterone is not it has nothing to do with prostate cancer as far as it being aggressive, worse, more um, likely to happen. I, um, I hope hopefully I didn't talk too much on that. No, but, no. I think that yeah. like to me, I you have the scientific data and, you know, and again, I've read um, the Testosterone for Life book by Morgan Teller. Yeah. I always called it Morgan Teller. I always got it wrong for some reason. But anyhow. Well, I, and and, I, might, I might have it wrong. I mean, I apologize, um, doctor. I know. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. We're, we're sorry if we pronounced it wrong. But again, great book and great chapter on that. And he talks about how he, you know, kind of transitioned out and, and researched it, you know, and found it not to be the case. But I think of it from a, you know, practical standpoint. 
is that if that was true, that prostate cancer was caused by testosterone, every guy that was in his teens and, you know, 20. late teens and 20s would have prostate cancer. So clearly doesn't Absolutely. make sense, right? So. Totally. So Morgan State is is, is a um, academic facility that has a lot of autopsy studies that they have published. And there are quite a few young men in the studies that are found in their 20s and teens even to have microfoci of prostate cancer at their deaths, you know, in their early 20s and, and teens. These are men with the highest levels of testosterone, but they don't have tumor growth. They just have microfoci. Yet the men who are dying from prostate cancer are at the end of the spectrum that have the lowest testosterone levels right. during their lifetime. Men lose testosterone at a big rate. We peak at the age of 25. It's about 1% to 4% a year. So if you compound that by the age of 50, 100% of men are at 50% of their peak levels. By the age of 60, they're at one-third. And by the age of 70, they're at one-fourth. Yet it's their 50, 60, and 70-year-old men that are getting diagnosed with prostate cancer when their levels are lower than they've ever been in their life. Prostate cancer is not caused by testosterone. Now, is there like a saturation to, um, you know, the level? Because I, I hear, you know, above a certain level, maybe 200 being that level, that again, then there's no change in it. Um, is there such a thing? You're losing me on this one. Saturation? It, like a, a saturate, I mean, like a testosterone level above, like below a certain amount, oh, oh, it oh. matters, but then I, above a certain amount, it doesn't matter. It's. Re I tell patients to go, Here, here's what I'm really concerned about. I want to see the bad numbers. Is your estrogen going up too high? Is your PSA going up? Not because of testosterone, but just because I'm always watching the prostate cancer. Those are the big things. They're hemoglobin and hematocrit. Because um, testosterone can raise your red blood cell count. That that thing it happens about one out of every eight, maybe one out of every ten men. Mm -hmm. And and if those levels are high, because too high of a red blood cell count could lead to you know a stroke or heart attack, then then I have an issue. But lowering the dose of testosterone did not seem to change whether or not their hemoglobin or hematocrit red blood cell count went up. Those are just the one out of ten guys that have to go give blood. That's all you have to do. And for, the side, and for the side effects of, you know, optimizing yeah. testosterone. And again, optimizing yeah. it in men yeah. that have symptoms, right? Yeah. And yeah. But, you know, if a guy wants to go above a certain level, I mean, let's, drug dealers count on patients wanting, or not patients, but, you know, their customers wanting more and more and more. Right. And a lot of guys would just want more. And it's because the, the initial effect is pretty dramatic when you go from like a low level to a high level. But once you're up at the high level, then really going much higher is not going to change things. They're just, you. so here, here's one of the um, questions on my um, physical um, exam or history um, form. We ask patients if they have a low libido. If they say yes, the next pop-up is how many times a month are you having sex approximately? And then they get a range of, of, of drop downs, zero to four, five to nine, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, and typically you see a low number on an initial patient. After they've been seeing me, if you ask the same question, you will see a much higher number. So the person that was having sex zero to four, that's not having sex 11 to 15 is used to the fact that they're having sex every other night. And they just forget about that after eight or nine months and they want more and more and more. And I'm like, going, well, it's really not going to do much. When it doesn't seem to me like I get that a lot from men, honestly, it's like they already, almost know where they want their test level. You know, I felt better they here. Were, or I were. felt better there. And the estrogen is the same way. You know, you can give a spectrum, but some men like it on the lower side, some on the higher. It's so individualized. Beautiful point. And this is something for um, people watching us because there is no such thing as what should my testosterone level be or what should my estrogen level be? Every, think about it. Every woman is different every day of a 28 day cycle and every day of a nine month pregnancy. And some women feel great at this time in their cycle and this time of their pregnancy. Men are the same way. Some men like, you know, a, a, a testosterone of 800. Some aren't happy if it goes below 1200. 
that's up to them. As long as there are other numbers that can cause bad things, like estrogen or the red blood cell count, then I'll, I'll honor that. And so, again, side effects being, you know, the estrogen rises, you have symptoms with it, you know, or your hemoglobin hematocrit, PSA, you know, and again, urinary symptoms are symptoms related to, uh, you know, a prostate yeah. effect of maybe DHT conversion. So, but no, I agree. Like, I, I don't find men wanting more and more. I find that most men just like it on the higher side, and that becomes established with them, or they don't. And that estrogen is clearly dependent on the man because it could be low or high and you'll they'll they'll tell you where they want it once you start treatment and customizing but yeah. so and and well go ahead oh uh, no wow well, no no i was just gonna say so you know back to that testosterone doesn't cause prostate cancer and it does not so really it's keeping an eye on the psa and digital rectal exam and screening for it which is the important thing so it's not like they have yes. to fear testosterone they just need to be screened on a regular basis. They all have to remember is we're doing nothing but putting air back in the tire. You cannot take a lab, you cannot draw blood from one of my patients on testosterone or not on testosterone. And the lab cannot tell you if they're being treated by me or you, or you know, folks that do what we do using bioidentical testosterone. It's the exact same um, hormone. It's, it's there's no difference it's what their testicles used to make but used to make a lot more of when they were 25 and it's making a lot less of now that they're 70. and again erectile issues definitely increase with age with that lower testosterone and so symptoms and, matter like it, sex drive well function this is the biggie energy they're not testosterone i mean excuse me they're not um PDE5, otherwise known as deficient. maybe like Viagra, Cialis, you know, deficient mm -hmm. when they're sick. They're testosterone deficient. Correct. Um, when they were 25, they didn't have PDE5s in their bloodstream. They just had a lot more testosterone. So, you know, let's go to the root of the cause. And if we still need to bring in some other help, we can. Correct. But you weren't you're not deficient in those pharmaceutical products. And we say the same thing, like when it comes to anti-anxiety, depressants, or sleep, because it helps with all that too. It's a life force. And so they're not deficient in any of that as we get older. You know, that zest for life just isn't the same. You hear that all the time. Well, it is after you're optimized. Yeah. And so it makes a huge difference. Life force for men and for women. You know, and again, that... Um, you know, safety, still not as well accepted in women, but, you know, we're making strides every year, I think. Not us, but overall. I mean, we know, but, but anyhow, so it doesn't cause it. And again, when we're talking about that, just screening in our other, your, our other podcast, but what you were talking about is, again, pro prostate cancer is common. It is, you know, again, present in probably most men when they die, but they don't die from it. But they do, it, it kills a lot of men if they're not screened and treated. I can't stress this enough. It is the second leading cause of death by cancer after lung cancer, period. Over colon cancer, which every guy is getting their, you know, their um, GWIAC done to see if there's blood for, um, you know, screening for um, um, colon cancer. Prostate cancer kills more men than any other cancer except lung cancer. Period. End of story. That makes it a big deal. Just because a lot of men die with it in their body doesn't change the fact that just as many men die from prostate cancer as they do from breast, as women do from breast cancer. And if breast cancer is important, so is prostate cancer. I would definitely direct you to look at our other podcast and we will link it in the description because it talks in depth on uh, prostate, you know, the incidents and diagnostics and treatment and all that. And so, and, and Dr. Ibrahim does a great job of going into detail with that. So check that one out. And so again, when we're talking about 
um, this topic, I do still agree that there's a significant percentage of urologists that scare patients. But again, I feel patients are more proactive than providers when it comes to this. And so they, they read, they're on the internet and searching. And so. And please, I, I want to tell the listeners or our watchers, I was one of those urologists that would say no. Yeah. I've changed my mind a hundred percent, 180 percent. Now that I know today's knowledge, because what I learned 30 something years ago is so different than what I know today. And, and I respect the um, providers out there that, that still fear it because I was one of them. I understand where they're going from it. Mm -hmm. I was one, Yeah. but I've learned what is out there now. And there, I mean, there's a lot of things that have happened in 30 years and that you have to keep up with it. And, and yeah. it's different. What we know today is so different than what we knew 30 years ago. And it just seems to me, again, I say this with, you know, breast cancer and women, and I say it with men, like when it's highest, if it actually caused it, because we're using bioidentical, which is identical, if it actually so caused it, then you would have it when your testosterone was highest. So just that, you know, just common sense would make you doubt it, but now there's lots of evidence. And I think a good source, wouldn't you say, is that book, Testosterone for Life, as a starting point, because it's, it's a very a simple read. Yep. It's great um, as a starting point. And there's a chapter in there that talks about prostate or testosterone and prostate cancer. Good starting point, yeah. at least, if yep. you don't know. And then take that to your urologist. And again, Dr. Ibrahim is in Asheville. I would love for everyone to leave their um, comments and experiences and any feedback. And if you want to deep dive into anything else, because Dr. Ibrahim is a, you know, a wonderful source of lots of different, um, you know, expertise in lots of different areas and sexual wellness is one of them. We, I love having him on the podcast because he has a great way of expressing, you know, complex topics and and breaking them down for people to understand in a very easy way it uses lots of you know analogies and and stories you got any other stories for us you want to share today before we go I'm right now. No. i will have a good one for this one but i'll, I'll come up with one no always a pleasure one of these podcasts with you, Dr. Durst, always. It is always a good one. And we're going to do, we're going to do one in person soon. And until then, um, you know, I'm so happy that you joined me today. Share this with friends and with family members. And again, um, try to check out the link to the prostate cancer podcast because it has lots of great information. So it was a pleasure joining up with you today for this topic and... You have a wonderful evening. Anything else you want to, Dr. Ibrahim and Biltmore Restorative in Asheville? Thank you. All right. Thanks, George. Bye.